Welcome back. My name is Matt Reiners and I'm the co-founder of Eversound, a company dedicated to improving quality of life for older adults by giving them the gift of hearing. Today, I'm joined by my friends, Jenna Anderson, VP at Marlowe Marketing and Marlo Fogelman, the founder and CEO at Marlowe Marketing. I've gotten to know Jenna quite well over the years and she's become a, a good friend, an honorary aunt to my daughter. And it's been awesome getting to know Marlo along the way. And I'm just really excited about what they're doing and the vision that they have for senior living and, and how marketing plays a role in that. So thanks for joining me today, Jenna and Marlo. Thanks so much, Matt. You know. So first questions for you, Jenna, what's your story and how did you get into senior living? Yep. So you know a bit about my story, Matt. And um, I don't know, I guess it was like 17 or 18 years ago. I was in real estate and um, I was doing really bad <laughs> and I had uh, just like put my first house under contract and, you know, you have all that money like allocated and spent and um, it fell through and uh, on my way home when I was like crying into my steering wheel, my mother called me and, uh, you know, my mom's in this industry as well and uh she heard me, you know, sobbing hysterically at the phone and said, you know, why don't you think about senior living? So I started off in sales and thought I would do it for a year. And uh, 18 years later, here I am. Amazing. And then Marlo, a question for you. What inspired you to start your own business, especially a marketing company? What inspired me? Well, I, I, had a rather um, untraditional path into marketing. I moved to Boston originally to go to law school. So I'm actually a licensed attorney in New York and Massachusetts. Um, and I fell into a job in PR at the largest um, independent agency here in Boston a long time ago. And really long story short, Starbucks come into New England in 95 by buying a small six unit chain of coffee shops called Coffee Connection. And just did a really poor job of integrating into this market. I think they did not really understand the uh, the real impact Dunkin' Donuts had uh, in this market at the time. And so they went through five PR firms in five years, hiring and firing. They've been at the agency I started at uh, for six months. They weren't happy. They put me on the business. I tried to run the three months and ended up keeping the account for five years and started the agency about four and a half years later. So it was really because of that experience working with Starbucks and and. Um, my second client was one of the sec one of the first boutique uh, hotels and super high end restaurants um, in the country, and it was a really interesting way for me to learn about the industry and see whether you're selling a cup of coffee for five bucks or you're selling, you know, a hotel room for, you know, two thousand um, dollars. Ultimately, it all it all comes down to not just awareness but really the education behind it, and that's something I think that um, has has really helped lead us to where we are today. Somehow that's way cooler than high. <laughs> well, I think I didn't know I was talking to like a a rock star in terms of someone who took on Dunkin' Donuts here in the New England market. I mean, I feel like that is a religion for some people here. So, uh, but that's uh, that's awesome. Um, and I know Jenna recently, you know, you have left the the provider side and have come to the dark side of the the vendor side. Just wondering what what inspired that or what made you wanted to move over to this side of things. Yeah, that's funny, because when I first told you, the first thing you said was, welcome to the dark side. So <laughs> remember that from you. Yeah, I, I, you know, once I got into senior living, like on the provider side, I really didn't see myself leaving. Um, and honestly, it was meeting Marlo and working with her team, um, which I was able to do at my last company. I was a CMO and worked with Marlo and her team. And um that's honestly what did it. It was super inspiring. It was really eye-opening to see how, you know, she could impact not just one company, but many companies. Um, and for me, just something, you know, super, I just felt very connected to what she was doing. And so when the opportunity presented itself, it was just a no-brainer. Yeah, it makes sense. And, uh, you know, there's, there's good things on the dark side too, I must say. Um, but I find it funny that talking about sales, normally you say if, you, if a journalist leaves like the news, a newspaper or a magazine or coming into the PR world, it's the dark side. But I find it interesting that like sales coming into marketing is still, why is marketing the dark side? 
He means the vendor side. The vendor oh, side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You got yeah. To say, yeah. Yes. Uh huh. That was his yeah. first thing he said. Yeah, and it's uh, it's funny because you see that move happening a lot. Um, can people coming from the provider side to the vendor side, it's definitely rare. The other way, it do it does happen for sure, but yeah. it's uh. Yeah, it's always been my running joke that, you know, the vendor side's the dark side, but we do good things too. Yeah. <laughs> um, but but Marlo, I'm I'm curious for you, you know, what is outsource senior living marketing and what inspired you to create it? It seems like a very niche branch of the the Marlo marketing, but like what what was the reasoning behind that? Yeah, it's actually really it's about an evolution. I mean, so I started the company in two thousand four. And at the beginning, we were very specialized in hospitality. And then from there, we grew and we had a really broad number of clients across all uh, spaces. And I would say probably in like, I should have looked this up. I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, we worked with another senior living provider out of uh, Long Island who was opening a community here on the South Shore. And um, we, they basically hired us. We did, we didn't, we didn't there wasn't the moniker on it at that point, but it was basically outsourced marketing where we handled everything for them. Um, and it was all about lead gen. And this was really before digital really wasn't a part of the the story at that point. So it was whenever, so it was at least 10, 11 years ago. Um, and so, you know, we did that. And, and then what really got us into this idea around offering our services in an outsourced way was um, a restaurant group, a 27 unit restaurant group based in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, called us about eight years ago and said, the CEO called me up one day out of the blue and he says, I want to fire my entire internal marketing team of six people and hire you. And I was like, I don't do that. Hire me to be your, you know, fill in the blank agency. And he said, no, I think you can. So we went in and we did this huge brand audit of literally every part of this restaurant. And we came back and presented this document um, and said, okay, you know, we think we can do this. We did. And then we proceeded to, we fired, we kept one person, um, we fired five of the people and we proceeded to break company sales records for, you know, 30 years, setting the company's single day sales record, highest sales in 30 years, just over and over and over. And so we were like, okay, what's the, what's the disconnect here? Why, why isn't an internal team able to do this better? Um, and it's it's funny, you know, when I decided to leave law and um, go into PR back, you know, originally, I really don't know what I was getting into. I didn't really know what PR was, to be totally honest. But I figured at the very least, people wouldn't think I was like scum of the earth because like, oh, great, another lawyer, just what we need. And I had no idea that like marketing and, and people are seen even in lower esteem, um, you know. And what happens is like at this restaurant group, the guy who was running marketing had been a bartender 30 years earlier. And when there was one store, two store, three store, he was like, hey, I'd love to go corporate. I'll run marketing. And he probably did a great job when there were three stores within a you know a 15 mile radius. Um, but 30 years later, he just wasn't, you know, really um he didn't really know what he was doing. And I, I've seen it again and again. I was just in Phoenix at a conference and there was a guy who had been a CMO who I said, oh, what do you, you know, what should you, what do you do? We we're sitting on a bus going to an event. And he goes, oh, I was at CMO, you know, now I'm my second day at a sales job for a technology, restaurant technology company. I was like, and he was in his fifties. Like you left a CMO job to do technology sales. And, you know, it's really the way marketing used to be, right? It was very easy. It was earned or it was paid, right? And that somebody like that would go and you'd hire an agency to do your media spend and you'd hire another agency to do your creative. And you'd oversee it all and like the leads would come in and it was great. But marketing has become so fractured over the years. So many different tools in the toolkit. And even now we're getting calls from people who like their marketing experience was running the loyalty program. And that was what they did for marketing. And now they were the person in charge of, you know, director of marketing or CMO roles. And so it's just been, I think, a really interesting um, uh evolution of the space and the internal teams just aren't able to stay abreast of what's going on. And so we can go in and it's not inexpensive to, to do it, you know, use it to use us, but it's way less expensive because if you're going to go and hire a CMO, you're going to spend easily to get somebody who knows what they're doing, 250, 300,000 easy base. 
And they're going to have to go and hire a bunch of people like me, or they're going to have to go and build a team. So you're spending six, 700, 800 grand before you've even done anything. And a lot of people in many spaces don't actually know what to look for in marketing. And so they're making a hire, but they don't actually know if this person's going to be good at what they do. And you go down the path. And if they're not, you've just spent all of this time and all this money and you end up with nothing. With the outsource solution, we can come in and literally start on day one and you see pretty quickly whether or not there's going to be an ROI. Yeah. No, it's, it's, yeah, it makes perfect sense too, right? I mean, I think the landscape is changing so fast. And what I've seen with people working in some of these, you know, some of these communities and some of these corporate offices, they just can't keep up, right? They're, they're putting out so many fires that they can't keep uh, abreast of the, the latest and greatest. And we kind of talked about the evolution leading up to this point. And I'm curious whether Jenna or Marlo, like, where is the future of senior living marketing going? Yeah. Uh, obviously Marlo jump in, but you know, it's funny. She was saying when she first started, there was really no digital footprint, you know, that it, it has really evolved. And, and I picture myself on the provider side, doing my budget annually and you have your line item for print advertising and then other things fall under, under that. And then we introduce digital advertising in your budget. And then pretty soon you're allocating all of your money to digital marketing, digital advertising, because I believe that's where the future is going, all things digital. You know, our clients are looking for us to do digital and, and do it well. And especially with seniors becoming particularly savvy, you know, back in the day, it was yellow pages. That's what you heard as your number one lead source, you know, back in like 2005. Um but now the seniors themselves are getting on the websites, you know, they're, they're getting savvy with technology. Um, and so you really need to be able to respond in kind and have interactive sites that speak to both the kids and the senior themselves. You need to have, you know, your digital advertising and, and cover all of that ground because, you know, that's, that's really where it's going. Would you say Marlo? Yeah. And I think the the thing that we add that, you know, a traditional digital only agency doesn't really do necessarily. And and I know this because we've taken over for a number of digital agencies across a number of industries. And we've seen it time and again, is what goes back to what I said originally, um, when I started in this industry, it's not just about awareness, it's also about education and how are you doing that? And it's telling the story. And there's a lot of digital agencies that aren't doing that well, they don't know how to do that. And so they might know how to create the, you know, the ads or, you know, the, um, you know, whatever, whatever it might be, but they're not doing it in a way that's compelling, or even if they are. And for example, and one of the reasons, um, I think this outsourced model and, and why we decided to sort of codify it when we launched these, this website, um, in April was a cult was a result of COVID to be completely honest, right? You know, we, as you can imagine, our industry is very heavily hospitality lifestyle and CPG specific. So we got destroyed during COVID. Um, all of our clients got destroyed. And so we clearly got destroyed. And um, two weeks after COVID hit, um, a 500 unit restaurant group that um, is based in Indianapolis came in and they had a 300,000 plus CMO on staff. They had a VP of marketing on staff. They had a PR firm on staff and they were getting destroyed. And two weeks after COVID, I was on plane. I was out there and we took over their 2 million person loyalty, their 1 million person email, their website, their digital, their social, their everything. And five days later, launched a program and turned it around. And so the same thing happened with senior living. And that's where Jen and I worked together. Somebody, the the person who had been in charge of marketing had um, had gotten let go. And they had a very important property opening up, most important community that they had. And we come in and I'm looking at it. I'm like, so whatever we do to drive people to this website, nothing's going to happen because this website isn't explaining anything, isn't telling the story. And so we said, let's build the website. Right. Like a down and dirty website we're going to throw away in, you know, a year or two years. So this is that's, you know, for perpetuity, but it's going to clearly and concisely explain why I, as a either child of a, a senior or as a senior myself, would be interested in learning more. And that's what we did. It came in. And, and that, I think, um, is really that when you talk about the future of, of senior living, I think it's the future of all marketing. Really, I don't think it's specific senior living. It's not just getting so ingrained in the tools and leaving sort of all of those things in the past that have worked because ultimately it's about the story. And I would say the other thing about senior living that's interesting, um, it's really the hospitality angle, which is another reason it's something that become, becomes very natural to us because 
as my generation is getting older and you know we've grown up and millennials have grown up with great restaurants and great hotels and great experiences and they're not going to go to a you know a senior living community where they don't have good food and they don't have a you know a community and a bar and cool activities and whatever um especially in the il space right so um i think more and more there are communities popping up that that hospitality element that the consumer is going to be demanding um, is is incredibly important as well in the future. Yeah, definitely. Another cool thing I would say too is you know artificial intelligence, you know, and at how we can really use it to our advantage in marketing. You know, and artificial intelligence allows you to look at customer you know surveys and resident satisfaction and things like that, and really tap into the data so that you can deliver you know, targeted marketing based upon the feedback that you're getting and, you know, utilizing artificial intelligence can really, you know, help you hone in on, you know, specific groups that that you really want to dial in on and allow you to deliver really targeted marketing. So that's been um, really cool as well. Yeah, that's really, yeah, there's so much opportunity. I think it's a great point. It's not just the future of senior living marketing, right? It's just marketing in general. And you know, what story are you telling? How are you being compelling and telling that and able to really drive people to the decision? And, and, you know, being a millennial, definitely have had some good experiences in my life. Um, and one of the other questions that I have, because, you know, we when we think about the senior living marketing teams, I think it's it's good to call out the labor cost of that CMO, VP of marketing, right? It can get bloated pretty quickly. And also some of those knowledge gaps. But what other gaps do you see in senior living marketing teams today? And Marlo, obviously, uh, chime in. But, you know, I think what kind of Marlo touched upon and what we touched upon, having to really have your finger on the pulse of, you know, <clears throat> what's, you know, trends, what's going on around you, digital, you know, it really requires additional, you know, bench strength. And and typically, you know, a lot of organizations just can't carry what they need to by way of either, you know, personnel or additional resources. Um, and that's where we can come in, you know, as Marlo said, you know, it's an opportunity to either support your team or be your team. Um, and again, I think with evolving and growing marketing strategies, you really need to have a good handle on, of course, what's, what's working and what's, you know, happening from even a trend perspective out there. Yeah. And actually Jen just brought up a really good point. So the way that outsource senior living marketing works, just two ways clients will use us. One is. CEO will come in and hire us and replace the CMO, replace the whole team, and we just do the strategy. It's basically fractional, you know, CMO strategy work and then day to day execution. But the other way we work, and and this is how we worked um, with Jenna when we met and started working together, is when there is a CMO in place, but rather than having to go and invest in building that team, right? You might not need, a, for example, forty hours a week of graphic designer. Or you might sometimes need a more senior level strategic, you know, design mind, and then you know the day to day, you know, junior level design execution. But you can't necessarily go. It doesn't make sense to go and hire two of those people, right? Um, you might not always need a PR strategy. PR might come in quarterly. It might, you know, I might plan, um, you know, at different points throughout the year, and so. Other, you know, other ways that we work is where we work with an internal CMO, but we are the team. Like we have a client right now, there's a CMO and her only other team member is one junior designer and the rest of her marketing team is, is our team. Um, and so there's two different ways that, that we can work. But as Jenna said, it's really, it's, it's filling in the gaps because no internal team is going to have the bandwidth to go and dig deep into AI. I have a whole committee of people that meet weekly, you know, digging into all of the AI tools and seeing what we can use. I have people who are, you know, constantly digging in technology, staying abreast of all of the changes with, um, you know, digital marketing, you know, all of everything that Google's doing all the time and staying, you know, so it's very hard for somebody, if you're working in a job and you, you're caught up in meetings and you're doing this, you got to stay abreast, stay ahead of everything too, because we're doing it for so many clients. Your, our clients that we that we use our outsourced um, uh, services for are able to really benefit from that. And then the last thing, which we didn't do before, and we added in when Jenna joined the team, um, is um, fractional sales, which we didn't do that before. We just did the fractional marketing. 
Um, and I literally just had a call last week with um, somebody who's on the board of one of the largest senior living um, companies uh, on the East Coast. And he's confident that it's the fact that they don't have the right sales team. And so would you have somebody who can come in and, you know, either come in and do sales for a little bit and get, you know, get our occupancy up um, or, um, or teach, you know, build, hire and, and build the team. And so I think there's a real need for that as well. And that's not something we were able to offer before Jenna joined. That's awesome. Jenna, any, any thoughts you have in addition to like what some of the gaps, I mean, you've, you're coming from the provider side, so I'm sure you've seen it firsthand for sure. You don't have to throw anybody under the bus either. <laughs> right. Um, no, I agree. I agree with, with what Marla said. Lots of times it's just bandwidth, you know, and it's, and, and like she said, you want a PR strategy, but you can't have your own PR person. So you bring us on or, you know, so again, it's kind of filling in for your team or being your team. And, and then, um, you know, hopefully I'm, uh, you know, working with teams on a, the sales end too, which, you know, runs in my family blood um, to, to help teams, like, like she said, strategize and close on the leads that we're bringing in and working so hard and on the marketing side. So kind of f full spectrum there. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah. I think the bandwidth issue is, is what I continue to see in some of these teams. They're asked to do so much yeah. with not a lot. And in addition to putting out fires that are happening every single day. And I think we're kind of finally coming to a place outside of COVID where they can start to focus on more of this stuff um, rather than doing that. I mean, you know, they're struggling to get communication out to families, right? Which should, and, and controlling and controlling that story of what was being, you know, said to people. Um, you know, it was, it was definitely a tough few years, especially for marketing and the stories that were being told that the news like to get their hands on and tell from these senior living communities, which, uh, you know, and, and of course, if, if it bleeds, it leads in the news. So, uh, it, and and my last question, you can either <laughs> combine your three thoughts or do it individual. Okay. You know, we, we make the rules here. Um, if you were to provide senior living providers, whether marketing teams or the operations teams or that CEO who might be listening, or even my mom who might be listening, um, just three guiding. She was. I thought you said she yeah, was. she is. She's my most dedicated fan. That her and the person that edits this are definitely my two guaranteed listens. Um, but if you were to provide just like three guiding lights or three guiding principles as they navigate throughout 2023, what would you say? I think we can each chip in on this one, Marlo and I, I, I will say certainly, you know, get creative, um, and don't be afraid to be unique. Um, one of the things that Marlo's team introduced when they came on and we worked together was TikTok and, um, that you can use TikTok videos in a multitude of ways. It doesn't just have to be on that platform. You can blast it out to your leads. If it's appropriate, put on your LinkedIn. Matt, I saw one of your uh, clients used your product, Eversound, in a TikTok video, which is super cool. I uh, saw that on LinkedIn today. So, you know, it's, it's getting creative with that stuff and not being afraid to just try something out of the box, um, you know, to, to, to differentiate yourself on the marketplace. Yeah. And I would say, you know, sort of stay true to your foundation, right? And make sure you know how to tell your story. Make sure you have your differentiators, your community's differentiators, um, really clear. Um, and even if they're not, they're not all that different, right? I mean, you can still, there's still ways to really, um, you know, own those and go deep and communicate them. And it's just a big, a big, a big way that, that people, I think miss they go and spend all this money on all this marketing, but they don't have that sort of foundational, those foundational elements um, done done correctly. And then the last thing I would say is don't be afraid to, you know, use old school tactics, right? Like digital is certainly a great way and a great way to you know attract your leads. And if you've got a CRM set up and you can do it, but there's a place and time and a place for you know direct mail, right? There's you know time and a place for um, you know, a little event in the community. There's a time and a place for advertising on the back of the um, program book in the local high school's, you know, theater production of Greece, right? And so it's certainly staying abreast of everything that's going on, but also thinking about what are the ways that you can really, you know, go deep in, in your communities to reach the people you need to reach. I might add one little more that to tag on tomorrow is have a make sure you're investing in a CRM because it surprises me how many clients we talk to that maybe don't still 
And, you know, really the return there is so important because you're tracking everything that works, of course, and just getting good metrics because you might think you're putting out something super cool and then really you look back and you have no leads attached to it. And, you know, we're all about obviously lead gen and results and giving you good ROI and you need to, you need to make sure you can track that too. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Jenna. Thank you so much, Marlo. It's amazing to meet the person who took down Duncan in New England. Um, <laughs> uh, that's awesome. But no, I, I, I think you guys are doing some really, really cool stuff and in, in playing a and feeling a need, right? Feeling a need in, in the market. And I think where we'll continue to grow and what I continue to see, I think it's, you know, people within the senior living industry, they were a marketing director at a community, did really well there. And then they move up the chain and, you know, are lacking some of that, that, that grand scope of things that an agency can provide. So thank you guys for joining me here today. I appreciate you, Jenna and Marlo. And uh, I know our listeners will get a lot out of this too. So thank you. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Matt.